This statue has special properties. If you touch it and then touch a part of your body that is suffering, your suffering will go away. <laughs> this was a magical moment. Came across this behind one of the temples, this scene of a monk uh, making some kind of offering or some kind of ritual. We are still in the Nara Park, about to head to the area of the stone lanterns. In one of the temples we saw many little babies. And this is the area with hundreds of stone lanterns, which are lit uh, one night per year, which did not coincide with the time that we were there.
As we were leaving the Nara Park, we saw these ladies in a very uh, nice area of ponds and cherry trees. And we noticed that they were getting a lot of attention from about 50 photographers who presumably were employing them as models. Japanese people, there's certainly a lot of very serious amateur photographers in Japan. And with this being Cherry Blossom Week, they were out in large numbers. It's even better in a video. It's a model, yeah. Ah, it's a Notice the cherry blossoms falling conveniently around the model. Weren't the photographers lucky that the blossoms were falling just at that moment? Now we understand. A Japanese soup or sa no sabe nothing nabi a nabi soup. You're supposed to slurp your noodles, but we didn't really uh, do that the right way. This was a train, you guessed, this was a train. Again we see some Japanese schoolgirls very keen to hold a little western baby. 
French baby, the very best kind. If the mother doesn't look French, it's because it's not the mother. That's the Philippine maid belonging to this couple of uh, French people. And this is our room. We're now back in Kyoto in a hotel near the station called the New Miyako Hotel. And from our room, we could see the bullet trains arriving and departing from the station. This is the older the old-fashioned kind of bullet train. The new bullet trains have a slightly different shape. I didn't go on a bullet train myself this time in Japan, but I think Katrine may have taken one to go from Kyoto yes, to Japan. They call them Shinkansens rather than bullet trains. We tried to find some interesting architecture, modern architecture, in Kyoto, and we came up with these places, but basically there is a lot of ugly architecture in Kyoto, <laughs> as in every other Japanese city. Would you buy clothes with this label? <laughs> Mr. Bean. Not exactly very popular in Japan, but not an unknown item. The Mr. Bean movie showed recently in Japan and didn't go down very well. And here I am, ready to leave Kansai International Airport and leaving Katrine behind. She stayed for another week and visited Tokyo where she was due to have a course in cinema analysis, cinema criticism. This is my plane under the rain at Kansai International Airport. Very good narrative. Let's upload. Okay, so here I am waiting on the track for my Shinkansen bullet train going to Tokyo. Actually, I got into the wrong one, the one at 2.34 p.m as a Japanese was sitting in my so-called seat. I just had time to get out and take the next Shinkansen seven minutes later. Uh, that's my hotel room in Tokyo uh, for 100 US dollars per night. Very nice, very cheerful. Next day to cheer up I went to Asakusa, which is a traditional neighborhood of uh, Tokyo to visit the temple there. Huge lanterns, many people but it did not really quite compare with the uh, sort of mystic atmosphere in uh, Kyoto and the Zen temples. School girls visiting, we always wondered what they were doing at all times of day in uh, their uniforms, a deserted street in Asakusa, sort of looking like Kyoto, traditional neighborhood, that's the view from my uh, Fairmont Hotel, that's the Imperial Palace and the uh, Doof, I don't know how you say this in English, boats, which Japanese go on, you can dis you can see the Ginza neighborhood further away, that's the uh, Mary, the city hall of Tokyo, that's the only um, high-rise buildings in Tokyo because of earthquakes, earthquake proof apparently, that's the view from the top of the city hall of Tokyo, looking, uh, looking, looking south and that's uh, street, looking a bit like La Défense or I don't know, World Trade Center in New York, that's inside of a building, very nice architecture, right across from the City Hall of Tokyo, that's an upside-down picture of the uh, pendulum of a clock, the pictures are going so fast, I'm rushing, that's a huge clock, forgot the name of the building, that's from the top of the uh, building, where there is this clock, with a the passage, that's another two buildings right across City Hall and the preceding building. 
That's a street in uh, Shinjuku, actually, those brand new buildings, not brand new, but those high rise buildings in Shinjuku West, and that's Shinjuku, I mean Shinjuku, Shinjuku East. This is Shinjuku East, sort of a cross between Pigalle in Paris and Times Square in New York. Advertisement, TV screens. Didn't take any pictures in Ginza because it was pouring when I was there. Didn't like this neighborhood very much, it sort of uh, run down and then I ended up in a red light district which I ran away from. This is another neighborhood, very nice, Shimbuya, with uh, Japanese uh, youth, punk style, before becoming uniformed in two job, they go into threading their hair and uh, charming Japanese women from the back. Shimbuya, which is the equivalent of the Champs Elysees. You're going to see a French cafe very soon, a complete copy of a cafe floor, which was quite a funny sight to me. It was not exactly Saint-Germain, but it had a definite uh, European atmosphere. So that's two days later in Nikko, two hours train from Tokyo. Uh, in the mountains, that's a volcano. It goes up to 2,000 or 3,000 meters. I was very pleased to see um, ice. That's the... Uh, Ambassade de France, where Paul Claudel, the dramaturge and poet, was at the Guardian for Buddha, right across from the French embassy in the temple there. Buddha sacred heads there. It was very nice, it was cool, and sort of reminded me a bit of Tao, a big lake. Forgot the name of the lake actually. You can see ice and snow on top of the mountains there, so that was the only two days of nature I had in those three weeks in Japan. It's a nice cascade and that's another temple. Nikko is very famous for its uh, temples but they are like uh, over decorated sort of in a Chinese way, sort of a baroque architecture which is quite uh, different from the Zen, very austere architecture of uh, temples in uh, Kyoto which I preferred much more actually but nice colors nonetheless. Uh, elephant sculpted by Japanese artists which had never seen any elephant, hence two tassel, and that's a famous saying of uh, Nico the monkeys. I saw live non monkeys actually on the road later on. That's a white horse given by New Zealand as a companion to the Buddha, and the priest assured us that the horse was taking walks in the nature. But it was very nice there, it was like the temples in the midst of the cedar forest and the serenity of it all. My uh, whiskey and uh, later on, I mean the next picture is uh, sake. I don't know whether those are sake barrels, I don't know whether they are for the monks to endure the harsh life of meditation and uh, or for the gods. And that's uh, temple, the best one in which I uh, saw and heard a wonderful Buddhist mass. Very serene. That's uh, Tori, which is the entrance to the Shinto temples, and those are the gods with the Shinto religion. Actually, that's the best temple I've ever seen. The, the mass was taking place there with this mist and the cedar. Guardian of the temple, bright colors, strong expression, sort of baroque. And that's the last picture. That's a famous bridge. I forgot the name of it.